jump into the horse, a uh, good way to think of it, it's like one of those tall cranes that you see um, building skyscrapers. So the horse's head and neck extends out well beyond the forelimb. The forelimb is the vertical part of the crane and then this is the cantilevered part. So we need to have cables to hold that cantilevered part in position. So we have muscles running from the horse's neck back into the scapula, the rhomboid muscles, and then we have the uh, ventral serrate muscles coming from the spinal column itself, from the cervical uh, portion of the spinal column coming back into the scapula. And then opposing that, we have the, uh, vent the ventral serrate thoracic part, that's uh, branches coming from the scapula, inserting onto the forward uh, ribs. And then along with that, we have the triceps muscle with uh, numerous branches coming off the, the distal end uh, caudal face of the scapula down to the ulna. And we have branches coming from the proximal end of the humerus uh, to the ulna as well. So then as we come further down, we have the supraspinatus muscle which runs down the length of the scapula and inserts onto the proximal end of the humerus and we have the biceps brachii which comes off the distal end uh, cranial portion of the scapula comes around the corner and sends a branch all the way down to insert onto the proximal end uh, cranial face of the uh, radius and about midway down it has a branch a tendinous branch that runs off and comes down and inserts onto the proximal uh, or face of MC3. So this is the biceps brachii and then the branch off it is the Lacertus fibrosis which comes down and inserts into this region of the of MC3 or the cannabinoid. And along with it we have a branch of the radial carpal muscle which comes off the distal end of the humerus and joins with the Lacertus fibrosis to then insert onto the cannabinoid. MC3. And opposing this, uh, these tissues here, of course we have the flexor muscles, the superficial flexor and the deep flexor muscles, which are sending their tendinous branches down over the back, uh, the caudal face of the carpal joint, and then on down the limb, passing over the fetlock. And of course they are supported by the check ligament, the radial check ligament of the superficial flexor tendon and then below the carpal joint, the subcarpal check ligament of the deep digital flexor tendon. And then once we come down to this region, of course, we have the, sup uh, the suspensory ligament, which originates just distal to the carpal joint, passes down and inserts onto the proximal sesamoids, and then sends extensor branches forwards. So it crosses over and comes forwards. So the uh, suspensory ligament and the flexor tendons along with the check ligaments and the other associated small ligaments of the fetlock joint and the other distal joints stabilize the distal end of the limb and then this tissue up here stabilizes the proximal end of the limb. We have two uh, sets of muscles here which are stabilizing the scapula holding it in position with a little muscle tension and then we have the triceps and the supraspinatus and the biceps brachii stabilizing this joint and then this joint. So with a little muscle tension, the horse is able to keep these bones at this angle. And then this portion of the limb on a well-conformed horse is vertical, so it really needs no tension. And if you uh, have a horse that is a bit over at the knee, you will see that this part of the leg is not very stable. On a well-conformed horse, this will be stable at rest. And then, of course, the distal end of the leg is stable when it's uh, well-conformed with that angle because we have these parallel straps, the extensor branch of the suspensory and the flexor tendons, and then the other supported small ligaments. And that stabilizes the forelimb and gives us the stay apparatus of the forelimb.